Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about mechanism and the machine element uh, which is related to component and the hardware uh, unit of manufacturing automation. So let us uh, define that what is mechanism or what do you mean by machine element. Moving to the next slide, mechanism or the machine element make up the basic component of the mechanical system and the mechanical system which does the different type of mechanical. Now the primary purpose of mechanism is to transfer or the transform force from one form or one direction into another direction or the another force, right? Like rotary motion can be transferred into reciprocating motion. That is one type of thing. Similarly, there are a different uh, like the with the help of uh, four bar mechanism as you may be aware because you are you are already a mechanical engineer so in that you are transferring one direction force or some time you are gaining the mechanical advantage and uh, small force can be uh, make, made into or it can be uh, you can say that amplify into the another type of or uh, another force the most basic element of mechanism were described as the simple machine by Renaissance scientists and which includes the following. And uh, following is like you can say it is the following is like lever, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane and the wedges, screws. Now with uh, the combination, because this is given by one of the scientists and his name is Renaissance, with the combination of these things, we can have different type of me mechanism or the machines element like such as the gears, the cams, the follower, you can say that bearing, which is the, uh, which is the, which comprises all these uh, things. Now moving forward, here you can see it. Uh, I'll just put the ballpoint pen. So here you can see, now we'll move forward. The machine element include component that allow power to be transmitted from, uh, from one mechanism to another. So that is one thing. Now elements such as bearing, coupling, clutches, brake, belt and chains are the example of component that facilitate movement. Movement means we transfer the forces from one part of machines to the another part of the machine. And with that, uh, we'll be able to get the mechanical advantage. So this is one thing. And uh, now the first mechanism or the first machine element is the combination of cam driven or cam and follower mechanism, or it is called as the cam driven device. So one method of uh, translating rotary motion into the linear motion is the use of cam on a rotating shaft. And what is that cam? In the cam, you can see that uh, it is offsetting, offsetting the center. By offsetting the center of round or the oval disc on one shaft, the cam surface will vary its distance from the shaft center. Like there is, uh, you can see the style draw here. Uh, sorry. Here you can see it is some oval type of thing. Which, which, whose center is here, here is the center and there is some follower and if the center is offset, the, if it is started rotating in that case, the follower can move up and down depending upon how much uh, it is offset from the center. So this can be used to drive a shaft linearly. The linear shaft is often called as a follower. Now you got it. Already you have the idea. And the springs is also used to keep the end of the follower in contact with the cam as it rotates. Means followers would be in contact with the surface of the cam. Once the cam is rotated, the followers would be in contact with this one. For that purpose, the spring is used. So, uh, in the actual PPT which I have sent, that one video link is also given and you can see that. Now, another mechanism because uh, cam and follower is one type of mechanism and another is ratchet and pawl system. In that, uh, you can see a ratchet is a mechanism that allow a linear rotary movement in one direction. 
right movement in the opposite direction is prevented by the spring loaded pawn that engages teeth on the ratchet it turns like one is called as ret ratchet and another is called as the pawn and the pawn is spring loaded which is always be contact with the uh, teeth of the ratchet in the next slide you will be seeing the diagram of the ratchet and the pawn it will be more clear the teeth are angled such that the pawn cannot be forced out of the slot between the ratchet teeth when the ratchet is reversed so here you can see uh, this one is called as the ratchet and uh, uh, this ratchet uh, this is ratchet this one is ratchet and this one is sorry this one is pawn so once it is rotated once it is here you can say that it is rotating in this direction this will be always engaged so it it, it will prevent the mo motion in the clockwise direction only the ratchet can move in the anti clockwise direction and uh, the pawn will is this pawn is you can say it is spring loaded and due to that it will be always in contact so once it is mo uh, rotating in anti clockwise direction the pawn uh, will allow to or uh, you can say the teeth of the ratchet will slip on the surface of the pawn but not in the clockwise direction so this way we will get that one side of motion now you can see here ratchet and pawn system are used in lifting mechanisms such as jacks and winding mechanisms and even plastic cable ties also so these are some of the application ratchet gearing may be used to transmit intermittent motion or to simply prevent the reverse movement of the gear now here i have given one youtube video link uh, in the last we'll see that all the video link in the time permits now let us move further the most popular mechanism in the mechanical uh, you can say the device is the gear mechanism or it is called as gear and gear reduction what is the purpose of gear it is used to translate rotary motion from one speed direction or force into the other so it can reduce the speed it can gear can reduce the direction of the motion from perpendicular to the parallel direction or it can increase or decrease the force or the torque uh, from one to the other now a gear is a mechanism usually round that has teeth and engage with another that you have seen already the mating interface between the two machine part is called a spline that is obvious now gear can be combined into trains if there are more than two gears then it becomes a train which can change the speed and therefore torque output incrementally rather than all at once so there will not be uh, means if it is a gear train so slowly uh, there is a increase in the torque or the reduce reduction in the torque as well as the speed if the torque increases the speed will reduce and you can say if the speed uh, reduces the torque will increase and if with the combination of this you will not get sudden increment or jerk increment or jerk reduction in the uh, and due to that to avoid that jerk we require that train if it is a combination of more than two gears then it is called as train they may have teeth on outside or inside circumference or the combination of so that is the purpose of gear the so gear to profile are almost always slightly curved in shape called as involute that uh, you may have studied also uh, earlier also okay, what is the meaning of involute profile and different type of profile and this curve is based on the diameter of gear and important in keeping gear movement and interfacing smooth and consistent so this is the main purpose of this profile involute profile this involute curve or involute profile is based on the diameter of gear and is important in keeping gear movement and interfacing smooth and the consistent that is you can say the uh, purpose of involute profile or the main advantage of involute the simplest type of gear is the cylindrical spoke that is the most simplest type and it is commonly used and it is the most popular type the spur gear only messes if the gear axis are parallel with each other means two gears axis or you can say the two shaft axis in which the gears are mounted are parallel to each other then in that case we are using spur
Another type of gear is the helical gear. Have teeth cut an angle to the axis. Here in spur gear, the teeth are parallel to each other. In helical gear, it is at angle. Like you can see here in this next slide, there is a picture. So this, uh, you can say that uh, these two shafts or these two axes are parallel, and this is called as the simple type of spur gear. Now helical gear. Uh, here you can see, as with the spur gear arrangement, they can be arranged in an internal or the external. Means if it is a hollow cylinder, here you can say that it is external spur gear. It can be internal also. Spur gear. Now, unlike spur gear, however, helical gear can also mesh on non-parallel axis because here you can see the teeth are cut at an angle to the axis. Whereas spur gear must be parallel but produce thrust only perpendicular to the load, helical gear produce axial thrust when arrangement with the parallel shaft. Here you can see these two are parallel shaft, and here you can see if these gears are meshing with each other, there is a thrust which is uh, here you can say uh, spur gear must be parallel, produce perpendicular thrust or load, but in helical gear. It is axial thrust. Axial means along the axis. Here it is perpendicular to these two axes. Then it becomes a spur gear. Right? Now we will move to next slide. Ah, here you can see the diagram of the helical. Here these are inclined at certain angle. And here also it is these two are the helical. Here you can see if the thrust is there which will be in the direction of the axis. These two axes not perpendicular to the axis. Whereas in spur gear, the thrust is perpendicular to the axis in this direction as well as in this direction. But in helical gear, it is parallel to that. This is one type. Another type of gear is called as the bevel gear or conical gear with the teeth cut and angled to the shaft. Means it is in the form of cone and on the cone the teeth are they are designed to contact two soft on intersecting axis and uh, you can see this diagram as the people here. here it can be straight or it can be curved also or inclined also so this is called as the people way so here you can see that power can be transmitted perpendicular like a spur and the helical here it was parallel in bevel here we can this is the axis and this is the another axis and from here if it is rotating in this direction, this can rotate in this direction. And the power transmission can be perpendicular to each other. Now another is the hypoid weaver gear or a combination of spiral weaver gear and the bomb gear. The axis of these gear do not intersect. The distance between the axis is called the offset. That is another type of hypoid weaver gear. Now, crown gear have teeth that project perpendicular to the plane of gear or parallel with the shaft. They are considered to be part of the bevel gear grouping and are sometimes called as the hot track gear. They must be meshed with other bevel type of gear or the expert gear. Then it is called as the crown gear. Now, warm and warm wheel is the another important thing. A warm gear is used to transmit motion at a right angle to its side. They have line tooth contact and are often used with this type of gear, one time called the wheel or the A worm gear resembles a screw and may have one or more toothed track running around it. So that is worm and worm wheel. Here you can see the diagram of this one. This is called as worm and this is called as worm. So if it is rotating, if it is rotating in this direction, clockwise direction, so here also you can see that the motion can be transmitted perpendicular with each other. And this worm and worm wheel sometime will be used for locking mechanisms. Means one once it is stopped, this will automatically stop, and it will be at that position. It will not move far, further, even the load is applied, or uh, you can say that uh, with the help of uh, some gravitational load, this will not be. So that's why it is called as the block. Now another is here you can see uh, warm gear is okay. Now a rake 
is a linear tooth with a rod or the bar that is really engaged with a round gear called the pinion gear. This is common method of converting rotatory motion into the linear motion and the vice versa. As with other gear type, teeth may be cut straight or at angle to the axis of motion. So here you can see the same thing. In the lathe, you may have operated with or you may have seen lathe, there is a combination of lead screw. The lead screw is nothing but it is a form and the combination of form. Once you are rotating, this will move linearly. Means it, will, it is rotating in this direction and it's rotating in this direction. So if something is arranged on this one, this will move, start and moving in this direction or in this direction and it is rotated. So here we can, in the lathe, here the handle is fixed. With the handle, this is rotated and on uh, the bed is fixed on this one. The bed will move linearly and the handle you are or you can say you are giving that rotatory motion and the bed is moving in the linear direction or getting linear motion. So a rack and the pinion system is excellent method of moving a linear axis rapidly over the long distance. A rack is usually the fixed component and the pinion gear is rotated with the traveling part of the system which is guided by the linear pinion. Here you can see. This is another arrangement for linear movement and the rotatory movement. So this type of arrangement is also there, rack and pinion arrangement on the lathe itself. Here the rack is usually the fixed component and the pinion gear is rotated from the traveling part of the system which is guided by the linear pinion. So it is rack and pinion. Now another uh, important uh, in that uh, gear is the epicyclic gearing or epicyclic gear. And it is used in many of the uh, can say that automobile is a method of combining gear in such a way that one or more of the gear axis is movable, usually one rotating around another. There are various arrangements that accomplish this using bevel or spur type of gear. So generally it is bevel gear or the spur gear, basically spur gear we are using. Epicyclic gear is a very compact method of achieving a gear reduction and it is often used in servo gear box, uh, servo gear box in the automobile. So that is one thing. Here you can see that it is actually clear. Here how it is. These three are, or it is called as the planetary planetary gear box also. So once you are rotating this one, it, this outer surface will also rotate slowly or fast depending upon the gear. So it means you are. You are, rotate, you are giving power to this one or you are rotating this one. These, these will start rotating since it is with this and automatically the outer surface will also rotate because this is attached with the inner surface or the inner shaft and the outer shaft will get power and you will get that speed reduction and or speed increase in that case. So this is about that gear system. Now next we will see about the bearing. Now bearing and pulley, this small one, we can finish. Uh, bearing allows the sliding or the rolling contact between two or more parts. They fall into three general categories based on their purpose that is called as the radial bearing uh, that support rotating shaft of the journal, thrust bearing, the second that support axial load on rotating energy and the guide bearing that support and guide moving element in the story. Bearing are also often described by the principle of operation or the direction of applied field. So this, these are the three different type of bearing, radial bearing, thrust bearing and uh, guide bearing that support or guide moving element in the straight line. So generally this uh, radial bearing uh, is for the rotating shaft or the journal bearing it is also called. Thrust bearing, the axial load on the rotating element. And uh, here you can see that rolling contact type bearing using the rolling elements such as ball or roller in place of lubricant or direct contact. Roller bearing generally have a much lower friction coefficient than plane bearings and therefore have less energy. They also generally hold tighter tolerance and are consequently more precise. This is one thing. Here you can say it is a cylindrical so here these are the roller, it is fixed in this one, the inner casing and it is the outer casing. 
So once it is rotating and the outer casing uh, is attached or it is fixed, it will it can move freely or it can uh, or if it is the outer casing is fixed, the inner casing can move freely. This is cylindrical roller wheel. In place of roller, we can have ball also. Then it is called a cylindrical ball bearing also for the smooth transmission of. Now another important type is the air bearing. It is a pneumatic device that uses a film of air between the surfaces. They are often used in moving heavy load on the floor surface, similar to hovercraft or the or air hockey table. You may have seen that air hockey table. The rotatory spindle and slide air bearing provide almost no resistance to motion and are very precise. So that is the main purpose or the main uh, advantage of the air air. Uh, bearing, uh, it is no resistant to motion and it is very precise. A pulley, sometimes called as a sieve, is wheel or drum mounted on an axle. It is generally have a groove or channel between two flanges that carries a belt, chain, or the cable. So that is related to pulley. Pulley can change the direction or the speed of motion, much in the same manner as gear. Pulley of different dimension transfer speed. Changes in proportion, proportion to the diameter or circumference of the pulley. Pulley are often used with the flex, flexible blade in the industrial application. It is common to use as a steel reinforced tooth belt in a belt driven actuator to provide linear motion. In this case, the pulley will also have proof in the surface parallel to the sound when it is a steel reinforced tooth belt driven actuator. To provide linear motion, so here you can see the drive. Here it is a positive drive between pulley and the belt. Why it is called as a positive drive? Because there is no loss of power. Since it is a two thread, uh, whatever the force or you can say that motion, it is perfectly transferred to the another pulley from this pulley to the another. So, this way. Now another is after this you can have compound drive also and in compound drive these are the arrangement of pulley which is called as the compound drive. With the less force applied here you will be able to move or you can say that heavy load can be moved with the very less force but the time taken for the movement will be high. So this way uh, generally it is for it is used in the cranes and the other. Uh, so this way we have uh, uh, come to the end and another uh, next uh, chapter or next topic will be servo mechanics that we will be dealing in the next slide. Whatever that uh, YouTube link uh, that is listed on the slide you should go through it will be more clear for you and I uh, will be sharing another thing or uh, you can say that uh, another uh, link also in separately to your mail. Thank you.
Thank you.